Hello and welcome back, and that's why today I want to do a very quick video, well, at least by my standards, about something that I don't think gets anywhere near enough coverage when it comes to the debate between manning and getting your own hardware server on your premises for home and business and going with cloud storage providers, your Google, your Azure, your Amazon-based cloud. Let's face it, they are massive, and by massive I mean often massively affordable, and there is just so many reasons back and forth that we talk about when choosing between either spending $10, $50, $100 a month on some huge amount of cloud storage or laying down quite literally thousands of dollars on your own storage solution. We could talk about price, talk about electricity costs. But you know one thing that never gets spoken about that much? Egress. When it comes to getting your data off the cloud, either on a periodic basis, ad hoc or large scale, honestly, it's I think one of the killer reasons why cloud platforms for your data are a money suck. They are a pain in the bum. There's a place for them. I'll say right now, I have integrated some cloud into my backup strategy, into my multi-tiered, it's more than just a three, two, one. I have got cloud factors in there, but it is most certainly not my primary and more importantly, my preferred backup tier. It exists as a failover of a failover of a fail safe of a backup of a one day it might. The reason that egress doesn't get anywhere near the coverage that I feel it should, I think a lot of the time it's the cloud storage providers hiding this information. Now, what is egress? Well, let's call it what it actually is, downloading. Downloading your data from the cloud. Now, when it comes to putting data on an NAS, you bung your data on it, you store it for a few years, you pull it off periodically, either in small form or sharing it with clients, or a multi-tier backup solution with data being shared between point A and point B, traveling for a server in the middle, that involves an element of upload and it involves an element of download. Now, when it comes to cloud storage providers, they generally smatter on the massive page there at the front, we charge this much per gigabyte, this much per terabyte, this much for your data. You can expand it whenever you want, and we have multiple clouds to back it up for you. We'll back it up to our data centers. But once you really dig in, you start to see little things at the bottom about egress. There's a reason they don't actually say download costs. Now, what that means is, if you need to retrieve that data, the majority of cloud storage providers, big and small, will tend, not all, but tend to either one, allow you to download a certain percentage of your data per uh, per month, per day, uh, per year, or whatever, I hate seagulls, or they will ask you to only be able to download for free up to a certain point, say one terabyte, and after that, horrifically charge you to download. Think of the old days of your mobile phone when you would run out of text and have to pay for them, go outside of your allocated data and pay premium per megabyte, not gigabyte. Or think about when you get your internet services and they go, congratulations, you've got gigabit internet. And then you look at where it says upload speed and you go, I'm sorry, what? This is very much that same thing. When you break down the cost of a lot of these cloud storage providers, it's only really on comparison sites that you ever find out more about those egress costs, depending on which one you go for. And indeed, if you head over to this channel here, Guy Guido's Hal 2s, he's created a fantastic spreadsheet here showing you just the free storage limits and free plans you can get. I'm going to link to that in the description as well. But when it comes to those cloud storage costs, and in particular egress, here's some example of just how those pricing can really scale out of control here at the top of the backblaze site so obviously this is backblaze's own site so it's going to be ever so slightly biased to them but it is still a great tool let's all you, let's say you've got 20 terabytes of storage backed up onto a cloud and we're going to talk about uh, later on scenarios for home and business but if you've got 20 terabytes there and you didn't want to download any data whatsoever as you can see Backblaze 1400, 6200, 4900, and 5500 across Backblaze, uh, Backblaze, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. But what if you need to download one terabyte a month, which I would argue percentage wise is reasonable? Uh, that is a 5% of what you're going for there. As you can see, look at that price difference when we change it across all three of those. It's gone from 6249 and 55 to seven three five nine six nine again backblaze that b2 system there does help you and they do still have their own policies by the way and bear in mind this is outside of any free date you get but imagine wholesale if you needed to replace 
all of that data or you needed to download all of the data to move off the cloud more on that later look at that insanity cost now obviously that's a per month figure that is not a per annual figure but if you had a subscription cost and you were trying to download all that data at once then that would still be pretty horrendous if we go any number we go for here the increase is still going to be big and bear in mind and that is just 20 terabytes of data if you're a business running multi-site you've got maybe 10 um client machines all backing up you've got your surveillance i would argue this is going to get closer to 50 and that doesn't even talk about when we're discussing you know you're doing off-site recordings you're you know in dubai doing an enormous video shoot there for a promo and you're making sure to have a cloud backup there in case, you know, on the flight, your drives get frazzled, something goes missing in the cargo hold. All of that means that if you needed to download that data and you only need to download, say, one terabyte, it's still going to scale up horrifically depending on what you do. Now, just briefly, let's give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, they are a business. These are hardware systems in the back end on the cloud and data center level that have to be robust. There has to be costs involved from electricity all the way through to the hardware in between to make sure everything works. Now, when you are downloading large amounts of data from a cloud platform for home or business, be it VM based or just standalone object storage, you know, they're going to have to allocate bandwidth to allow that much data to flow back down the pipe to you. How long that's going to take is obviously based on a lot of different factors from the upload download at either end to the sheer physical distance between different data center locations. Not all uh, cloud service providers allow for the same egress speed and amount. Some cloud providers have partnerships with local ISPs in certain regions that dominate across uh, different uh, countries that allow them to have preferential egress policies to be afforded to the customer base. For example, Amazon, as big as they are, they've got 31 data centers in the world. Google have got 40 data centers, each of those allowing for greater degrees of coverage and therefore affording a greater degree of egress when required to their client base. Also, as mentioned in the intro, Policies with regard to the pricing of egress do change from supplier to supplier, and some cloud storage providers pr uh, provide it wholesale to larger degrees, but lower performance numbers, or are quite generous with the inclusive egress policy. So we're not going to tile them all with the same brush. And we also have to touch on that some enterprise-grade cloud storage providers also include inline compression, which means that even though you may have uploaded a terabyte of data, when you're bringing it back, it will be presented to you in a compressed fashion, which you can then unpack utilizing their own tools or even semi-automated unpacking tools at the other end. And therefore, the data flowing isn't one terabyte of data over time. So we have to at least be fair that egress is not this black and white concept but it is something they could stand to talk about a lot more now the final nail in the coffin here is going to be to those users who are watching this going well i don't have to worry about that i'm not storing that much data or i'm not looking to get 20 terabytes 40 terabytes 100 terabytes i just want five terabytes of online data storage there egress isn't going to be my problem it's giving me one tb of backup uh, of, of egress policy i'm covered here's three scenarios i would argue are the most common scenarios that i can think of immediately that will be the biggest bind and the one where egress will really screw you financially so number one Let's say you've got multiple sites for surveillance, you're utilizing them uh, for backing up PCs or whatever. You've got three sites, site A, site B, and site C. They are all backing up to a central cloud platform. Presumably you've got a subscription with, say, let's say Google in this case, and all of them are backing up. They might have multiple PCs. There might be one PC there. There might be some surveillance cameras. Now, all of those are synchronizing together to that central cloud platform. Now, if you're lucky, sites A, B, and C also use um, uh, data streaming so it doesn't need to stream all the data but can at least see the layer of that data and then cache it locally when needed. That still means that when you are uploading data from site A to the cloud storage provider, sites B and C in order to access that data will need to download with passive often background downloads that you're not even aware of happening and it could mean that inadvertently without knowing it you could have staff members or automated systems that could accidentally trigger high egress charges now scenario two while i look at my notes you've got one office you're thinking well i don't want that multi-office environment i've got one office i've got 10 members of staff they've all got a pc we're all backing up onto our cloud there we don't need to download that data wholesale all the time we'll be fine well 
What if it burns down? Let's say they all go home and a natural event, a, a lightning bolt, who knows, that building burns down. You're going to need to restore all of those computers. You're going to have to restore all of that workflow, notwithstanding that the downloading of that data is going to take crazy time to do, depending on your internet speed and how you can bring it back down onto another site. On top of that, that is a huge amount of data flow that you may not be covered for by your insurance policy in the case of fire or theft. That means that on top of everything else, your business downtime and the time it would take to download that data, you've also got another charge just to get the data you own. And finally, this one is the sting in the towel that I've in a discussion I've had with multiple people while doing consultations, and that is quite simply when you move away from the cloud. You could be a business that has been with cloud for the last decade. You've been using cloud storage, again, some very affordable policies put out there by Microsoft, by Google, and more, around about a decade ago, maybe even 12 years ago, when it was just the wild west of cloud storage. And now, as prices are skyrocketing up from energy costs to just simple you know, market profiteering, you have decided to take your data off the cloud and onto your own private server, some large scale rack mount then, or to some small scale devices, and you filled it up with 10 and 20 TBs there, lovely stuff. Well, once you cancel your policy with your cloud storage provider, they are not honor bound to just give you a NAS or a DAST with your data. It's not up to them, they don't have to do that. What they'll do is they'll say, fine, you're canceling, sorry to see you go, come back to us if you want, here's a discount code when you do. By the way, you've got 30 days. You've got 30 days to get your data off of there or it's gone. And, I mean, on the one hand, it might not be gone. It might be on one of those backup servers. We'll get onto that another day. But that means you've got 30 days to get the data off of there. And remember, you might have been storing a decade of data on there. And it's a lot of data that you've suddenly got to pull off. And if your, if your data service, your internet service provider isn't giving you gigabit downloads, isn't able to give you those high speeds and in dare I say I can't imagine cloud storage providers prioritize and give afforded bandwidth to a leaving customer the result is that just leaving the cloud service subscription that you've got may suddenly incur an enormous unforeseen bill just to get your data off of there I genuinely wish People spoke more about data egress, particularly for that last scenario that I described, as it can be a real sting in its tail and also can end up being the reason that a lot of users don't leave cloud in a weird hostage situation, if you will, where you feel like you can't afford to leave the cloud because your business needs to run and you can't cover the costs of egress. Again, I'm not painting them all with the same brush. Different companies provide different policies. And if you've got a cloud service provider that is giving you good egress policies, good for you. But make sure you analyze these terms of agreements. Have a good look if you're with cloud storage and thinking of jumping, or if you're gonna factor cloud into one of your mini tiers of backup strategy, take a closer look at those egress policies. And if you do need to put your data away, work out a way to do it incrementally in advance by a few months. Even if you need to, start downloading it long before you go for a NAS device. Therefore, you can migrate it later on. It may work out better. But thank you so much for watching. This has been a quick rant by myself here, longer than I thought it would be. Have yourselves a fantastic week. We've got some new videos coming up very soon on DIY and a couple of cloud storage ones that I hope you're going to like. But apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.